about 35 degrees, and uh, we got the roof under laminate on, so it's completely dry in here. It's actually really not that bad to work. We got the propane heater running, and it burns through about a 15 pound tank in about five hours. So we're probably gonna go back to one of those 100 pound tanks. It's a little warmer in here. We still need to wear a jacket unless you're working. Right now we've got all our chalk lines laid out on the floor. We got this Hupar laser, and uh, I'll show it to you really quick. It's a three-axis rotary laser, so it uh, gives you square, plumb, and level. And all you got to do to turn it on is flip this little switch, and uh, unfortunately it defaults to just doing horizontal level, but there's all three. And if you look at the laser lines, uh, you can actually see how much it's going to help me <laughs> make square walls. So it's really good for squaring stuff up. It reveals where you're off right away. It's crystal clear. You can see bows in your, your door frames. You can see it marks the, the floor location on the floor and then the, the same point on the, the roof joists or trusses. And so it's really easy for standing up walls and getting them plumb. If you're a DIYer, I definitely recommend getting one of these. It's about 170 bucks and worth every penny. So uh, after we got that done, we got all our, our chalk lines squared up and to their dimensions. Uh, it flashes at you if you if it can't find level. We're laying out our uh, our plates, so this is kind of the first step of framing. You uh, you kind of lay your lumber down. We have a bottom plate that's uh, pressure treated because anytime you're on concrete, it has the potential to uh, wick moisture up and it'll rot out uh, lumber. So you're supposed to use pressure treated. Some people like to use a sill sealer. It's a plastic uh, foam that you put below your your bottom plate and it gives you extra protection. We have a vapor barrier down, so I'm not going to use that. Uh, but you kind of lay down your, your bottom plate, your top plate, and your double top plate, and uh, you can actually cut them to the lines, so you don't have to do any measuring. It's a lot faster. We, we happen to buy 16-foot lumber, because uh, lumber is crazy expensive again. I think it was like 12 bucks for uh, two eight-footers. It was like $13 for a 16-footer. So. I just went ahead and got the longer lumber, paid the premium, and I think it's going to pay off. And as you can see, uh, we don't have to we don't have to split a single top plate. Every single one is long enough to capture the entire wall. So I think that's going to be a savings in uh, some some pain. And I mean, any, it saves you on studs, so it might end up being cheaper because we don't have to tie two walls together. So we're going to lay these out. Uh, I'm going to try and staple them to the floor. Or I'm going to try and ram set them. I've got some three-inch ram sets. And uh, so it, it should be three inches of lumber, and I'm hoping the ram set will go in just far enough into the floor and tack into place. Probably not, but we'll see what happens. I guess another detail is if you are using pressure treated or bottom plate, you, uh, you need to be using galvanized framing nails. So they'll be right next to each other in the, the nail aisle. So if you're looking for the ones for your nail gun, I'm using 12 penny because I have a framing nailer. And you'll see galvanized and not galvanized. The ungalvanized ones are like 60 bucks for 2,500, and the galvanized ones are about 100, so they're a bit more expensive. I'll probably be changing out nails and firing galvanized uh, up to the bottom plate, and then switching to brights, uh, which is non-galvanized for everything else, just because they're so much cheaper. For some reason, there are actually pressure treat rated ram sets and non-pressure treat rated ram sets, and Considering they're both for going into concrete, I don't know why they wouldn't all just be galvanized, but I got the wrong ones the first time around. Actually, I can show you the boxes. They're deceptively similar. Got two and a half inch originally, but you actually need the one that says uh, approved for treated lumber. So these are galvanized.
bathroom section done by tonight, and then maybe we'll take a break. But we've got this whole room pretty much right now. We've got to get on top and nail in the top plate. Our bottom plate to account for this plumbing. And it's a lot easier when you actually have the piece cut to length. Because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark a little notch here, a notch here, and a notch here. And I should just be able to slide the part uh, over it. And actually, I see the concrete is not at all flat here, so I might just make a big notch in the bottom plate and slide it into place. Okay, let's see how it's. So, it looks like that goes around it pretty smooth. Officially, wife does not approve of my drink stand. This is a quick problem that I had bumped into and how I solved it. So, uh, if you look, my plumber had a uh, whole manifold of pipes that you know go all the way over to the utility room over there. They pop up in the bedroom side of the house, right at the wall intersection. So I couldn't put a standard, you know, three stud corner in. I had to get a little creative, and uh, I use this technique that's, I guess. A lot more common in advanced framing where you put these kind of uh, cross pieces in to build the corner and that lets you tack drywall to that and then um, it also gave me tons of room for my plumbing and so all the plumbing fit. <laughs> Here's the problem with how well you're framing up walls. I've got two by four studs with a little bit of twist in them. That's pretty normal unless you get unicorn lumber. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is get it lined up at the bottom. Go ahead and fire a nail right down here. And then the trick here is just grab a regular screw and put that in. Just go about that far. And then you can take your hammer and just grab it like this. This works with a nail too, but I, I tend to lose, my nails tend to come back out. And if you look at that, if I pull on my hammer, I can untwist it. <laughs> and then, you can't do this with two hands while I'm holding the camera, but just go ahead and fire a nail in there and it'll stay straight and take a screw out. Today is by far the coldest day I've been out here working so far. It's 12 degrees outside. I did uh, go ahead and put some uh, poly over the porch in the back to try and uh, keep the wind out a little bit. We'll see how that holds up. And then I went ahead and started doing, uh, cutting the top and bottom plates and doing lay it on them. Definitely should have been doing this the whole time where we just do all of them at once. It's way faster to just keep doing the same thing and then uh, as opposed to, you know, cutting a top and bottom plate, doing layout, framing it all together, and then repeating. It's a lot faster just to do it all at once. Um, so I got the washroom, laundry room done. I got that little door between the bedroom and the hallway done. I'm looking back here and I wish I would have actually extended this bathroom a couple inches. I don't know why I didn't do that so that these two rooms would have been flush with each other. Probably too late to do that now. I do still have to figure out this rake wall. I don't think I can do layout the same way because even though I can lay the boards on the ground for the bottom plate, the top plate has to be cut to length. So, and the top plate's not going to be the same length as the bottom plate because it's on a slope. I think what most people do is they lay out a template on the floor and so I'm kind of looking for a space big enough that I can lay out a full-size template and start framing up these rake walls because there's quite a few of them. There's this full-size one from the edge of the utility room to the front door. Then there's a handful of these little half ones that go from one side of the utility room to the wall. Here's another little half one. Another, uh, well, there's another half one. There's a full one and another full one. So I still have to figure that out. And then I'm not 100% sure about how to handle the angled top plate on uh, these perpendicular, these walls that are perpendicular to the right wall. Because, uh, <laughs> If you think about stacking two by fours for the top plate and then the double top plate, um, it'll kind of like, they come off at an angle. So it's like, how do you handle that? Do you like offset them so they're roughly straight, but then you still like drywall can't butt straight up against that. You need to like bevel it. So I've got to look into that a little more, figure out how to do that. I've kind of been dreading <laughs> getting these rooms started just because I, I don't entirely understand it yet. So I think once I get going, it won't be a problem, but especially once I do a full-size layout on the ground. But that's why I've been putting it off. <clears throat> but other than that, I meant the... It's the end of Christmas break. I go back to work tomorrow. Today is Monday. We get uh, the third off because actual New Year's Day was a, hot, uh, a weekend. But I got done what I wanted. I mean, I got this whole half of the house framed pretty much. 
I'll come back tomorrow night probably and, and put all these walls together. And uh, that's where I'm at. So we got the two bedrooms. Here's another bedroom with a closet. You definitely can't see it at all. It's <laughs> the camera, something about the aspect ratio or the, what is it, the focal length. It just looks like a big forest of studs, but in real life, it, it's pretty crazy because I'm, I'm walking through rooms right now. <laughs> got our bathroom. This is our bedroom bathroom. We have three bathrooms. We have a master bathroom, a small toilet in the public half of the house for the guest bathroom, and then we've got like a bathroom for the bedrooms. So you kind of walk in here, there'd be a big vanity here, so with like a double sink so you can, you know, brush your teeth and all that stuff. And then there's a door that actually separates off the toilet and the bathtub. So somebody could be taking a shower while someone else is, you know, putting their makeup on or whatever, and uh, or using the toilet. And then the master bathroom is kind of the same way where uh, it's <laughs> all the way out here. So now I'm in the master bathroom. This could be a vanity back here against this exterior wall. Uh, There's gonna be a tub in the corner there. We're gonna have like this awkward corner over here where we're thinking about putting cabinets, but it depends on how far this vanity comes towards the cabinets. It's kind of poorly thought out on my part. I guess we could turn the tub the other direction, but then if the vanity's like here, it's kind of like awkward to like step side step into the tub. But it's also awkward to like use it as cabinet space. So kind of gotta figure that out. And then it's got this little tiny room here for just the toilet, which I think is cool. I've always kind of like these little rooms. So I got that. <laughs> half our house is, half, one third of our house is literally garages. And then of the livable space, like half of it ended up being bathrooms. So I guess that's what you get when you design your own house. <laughs> Not the most intelligent layout. If you look at some of my doors, the top of the jam is actually at a different height. Uh, when I first started, I, you want an 82 and a quarter inch uh, high rough opening for the door. So I made the jack stud 82 and a quarter inches tall. And I had forgotten to account for the bottom plate that's down there because like later I'm going to come through and saw those off. So uh, <laughs> when I saw those off, my rough opening will be 84 and a quarter, which is starting to get really high. Ultimately, what I'll probably do is just, you know, layer another... Uh, another two by four across here in the jam just to take up that space but uh over here i eventually corrected it one unfortunate thing about that is uh making the jam lower the proper height makes the cripples a little bit longer like just like you know two inches or an inch and a half and the problem with that is previously that i was using 16 foot lumber and i'm framing 92 inch studs because i'm <laughs> that makes a wall that's you know 80 96 and a half inches which is a little bit shorter than a standard wall because I wanted to make sure I stayed behind all of my trusses so that I didn't have to squeeze walls in there. But uh, the problem was I was using that 16 foot lumber and with the 92 inch studs, I was getting an, like this piece that was almost the perfect length for a cripple. I just had to cut a little tiny bit off of it to fit it in there. And then when I corrected that door jam problem, all of a sudden the cripples are an inch and a half longer and all of a sudden that piece didn't work anymore. So now I've got, instead of using almost all the lumber. I'm actually ending up with this huge stack of these uh, these cripples that are <laughs> too short. So so far, I've liked framing with the 16 foot lumber just because it allows me to, you know, not have to butt eight foot uh, top and bottom plates together. It's uh, really convenient just to have a full length lumber piece of lumber go go down there. I'd probably do it again. I don't know. I don't. It, it's hard for me to judge what's expensive and what's not because with COVID, random things will be expensive. Like right now, um, EMT uh, conduit for electrical wiring, half inch. Usually, the stuff is so cheap that we don't even think about the price. It's like two dollars a stick, and right now it's like six or seven bucks a stick, and it's like, geez, like you have to actually decide whether or not you want to use half inch or three quarter because the price difference is just the difference between seven and ten dollars a stick, and it's just. It's nuts. And you know, if you hadn't done electrical for all the time in the past, you wouldn't know that those prices are crazy. But, uh, and, and in the past, you, you, you wouldn't, you just always use three quarter because it's just more convenient to work with. But, you know, I don't know, it's, it's nuts. And, and maybe it's that way with lumber where 16 foot is crazy expensive normally, or maybe it's not, and it's just not a huge cost to increase over getting two eight foot sticks. But right now it's like, 
a dollar extra to get the two eight footers it's a single 16 footer so i've been paying that premium to make my framing go a lot easier yeah.